Good morning. Today is a Sunday, October 4th, 2020, and it's about 9 o'clock uh, a.m. here in Pasadena, California at the Rose Bowl. So I wanted to explain a little bit uh, what I meant by we missed it 40 years ago. So uh, as I mentioned last time, our school system in Louisiana, which is not known for uh, you know large funding of their educational system, had funded us um, the accelerated learning programs quite a bit higher than the normal classrooms giving us things like uh, you know a computer lab and all of that which was not uh, normal uh, that's not something that the school systems had in Louisiana it's not something that the school systems had pretty much um, anywhere uh, really in, in the country so um, anyhow forget all of that and let's just uh, fast forward to the current day so I've been studying this for a very long time. I mean, even before ASM, just trying to understand um, how the economy works, where does opportunity come from, and all of that. So I think it's pretty clear, and it goes without saying, that the um, computer business, the technology business, is the source of most of the prosperity now in the country, probably in the world, I would say. Um, sports is uh, the focus of public attention. Most people are fans, they're, they're consumers of sports, they're not involved in the trade of sports, or maybe in some minor way, uh, so they don't really get to uh, participate in it as a market participant, as a builder, as a, as a business person. So um, kind of all of this put together began, I mean, when ASM was conceptualized, uh, I can't claim any knowledge of this big idea, you know, that sports investing would be this job creator. All of this really became, um, you know, I wouldn't even say it became obvious. It was something through, through digging deeper into the economics of the world in general and digging into uh, what asset classes do, uh, you know, Think, think petroleum, for example. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the most clear example I think most people could understand. Um, you know, what has happened to the world economy in the last 100 years from, uh, from oil, right? I mean, it's almost impossible to measure. Oil is essentially the base currency of the planet. I mean, it, it's, it's what everything is operating on and it's priced in dollars. So, you know, that kind of, uh, that, protocol is is really uh, our lock on power between but the petroleum business and the the fact that it's priced in dollars meaning you have to you have to basically buy dollars before you can buy oil right or you have to pay for the currency conversion which basically is the same outcome so anyhow um, so it's really about opportunity so when I said missed it 40 years ago it was clear to me as a as a young child in these accelerated programs that the world was moving towards technology. I can remember being fascinated by Silicon Valley and all of that and thinking it was literally on the surface of the moon. I couldn't even comprehend where it was. Um, so, you know, I, we saw that because I think more than most people, we were encouraged that direction because of the focus on computers and learning and all of that because of the accelerated learning programs. But that's not something that was available to everybody. So as a result, you know, I think my people in my class and that grew up around, you know, us and were participating in that program and those programs got an early um, view of what was coming and and got a jump on it. And that's why, uh, you know, that's that's why things have turned out a lot differently for us for the in the most part than the people that we went to school with that never left. OK, so the most of the country. So so it comes down to this. This is the point I want to make in this video. The political convulsions that you see. And let me just stop a moment to say that I don't wish any harm on on Trump or his family or, or anybody else, anybody else in the world, actually. Uh, you know, this is a very dangerous virus. I'm pretty sure I had it back in uh, early January when I came back from New York. Um, you know, I, the symptoms and all that matched. So it's really tough and it's very scary. So I don't wish any, any uh, harm on him. I mean, if, if the, I want to, you know, the election should be won fair and square, not through, 
through a, a medical tragedy or some other kind of game playing or anything. It should be straight. So uh, let me be clear about that. I don't wish any harm on him, and I do wish that him and his family get better. So putting that aside, so the political conv convulsions are a symptom, and they're not a... Uh, I mean, they're a symptom of the real problem, as I said last time, which is lack of opportunity in the middle. And, you know, that, that condition still exists. I mean, I grew up there. When I go back there, it's, it's a time capsule. You know, it's like nothing has changed in, in the entire 40 years that I, well, not 40 years that I've been gone, uh, 32 years that I've been gone. So that's, you know, that's a long time for nothing to change. So there needs to be new opportunity. And the thing about sports, especially now with the internet and um, the ability to get internet anywhere in the world, you know, the, the, the idea here is that because everybody's connected by, by the internet or soon will be at literally everywhere in the world, that you can build new opportunity because not only can everybody uh, participate, they can see the games through streaming, they can you know, track everything like they do now. I mean, you can track uh, New York City sports in, in, in the Congo. Uh, but, but conversely, you can build sports teams and leagues in the Congo from New York City. So that's, that's what this is all about, right? So say, you know, you're in, uh, in the middle of the country, which is, you know, all of these co economies have been built mostly on farming and mining and, and manufacturers, right? Well, manufacturers uh, pretty much all got outsourced, and that's a whole nother conversation. It's a lot more complicated than a couple of sound bites. Uh, and then uh, you have farming and mining. Well, that, that's not the high wage earning, you know, that doesn't produce the, the, the jobs, right? So the idea here is create a new form of sports technology, right? Sports financial technology where people can build on an ecosystem. And you can't do that with gambling. It doesn't provide that. Sure, you can build a handicapping service and all that, but the, the, that, that's not accessible to most people. And because the wins and losses are so in, intense, it's like crack pipe, like a crack pipe. People are wiped out. Your customers are wiped out. So it's not a, you have to constantly farm for new customers because you wipe them out. ASM's, one of its magical things is that because of the dividend payments, it scratches that itch without wiping out the, the investor. But more importantly, it creates a platform to build on so that you can build new businesses and things around sports. So the solution for the political problem is not electing a particular person, although I have certainly have views on who that should be that are very clear. That's not the issue. The issue is that the economic disconnection uh, is real. And, and, the, and the lack of opportunity is real. Uh, it's still there. It was there 38 years ago or you know, 32 years ago, still there. Um, but they're all sports crazy. And in, in fact, when you get into the, um, into the more rural areas, the more sports crazy they become. So to me, that's just a, a market opportunity there. You, you put all these pieces together and it will create an ecosystem where people can build sports teams and leagues where ever they want and then all of those surrounding industries um you know think about the stock market what industries surround the stock market all of those same opportunities will then be available in the in sports which touches just about everybody's life and they're far more familiar with it so again it's about building an ecosystem for job creation and 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 meeting people where they are and that's what ASM does, that's what sports markets do, that's what sports investing does, and that's what sports gambling can never do. So thank you, stay safe, um, and I will do the next episode soon. Bye now.